I would like to talk a little bit about Dalvin Cook. Dalvin Cook coming up on the trade block. The Jets are shopping the running back that they signed in August to be a one-year replacement for Brees Hall, or at least insurance policy in the event that Brees Hall had injuries or, or was slower coming back from the ACL. And it's frustrating, right? Because you see the one-year $7 million contract or whatever he wound up signing, and you say, man, we could have had that $7 million back. And it's 100% true. There's there's bad signings and there's things that don't work out the right way. But when I look at this particular signing, Aaron Rodgers took less money just like two days before the Dalvin Cook signing. And I'm not someone that's looking at this money and saying, well, we screwed it. No, well, I really think Rodgers wanted Cook here. I think it's pretty evident that that was the case. They played against each other in the NFC North for the longest time. And I think it was a good attempt though there were absolutely signs of cook starting to slow down prior there were plenty of fans out there that said do not sign dalvin cook do not go after him he's washed he's cooked there's a reason why the vikings are letting him go and the reason why the uh, miami dolphins are not paying as much as the jets were willing to pay for him and i would say that side of things was right too i would argue that dalvin cook is a little bit more of a uh Need him a lot in terms of, of touches and he wears down defenses over the course of a game. I do think he has lost a step. I'm not trying to be naive there, but when you're looking at this and you're saying, okay, objectively looking at the Jets running back room, Brees Hall's a stud. He deserves the majority of the carries first and second down all go to him. When you're looking at the third, you know, the third down backs, Michael Carter's starting to get more reps than Dalvin Cook in that capacity. I believe Dalvin Cook was sitting somewhere around 14% of snaps this past week. And you look at what has worked on the Jets' offense. It's when you get Gibson out on the field, a little bit of speed. It's when you get Rucker out on the field, a little bit of speed. Dalvin Cook losing a little bit of speed. We got Izzy to the hizzy sitting there as an active scratch. I would love to see Izzy come in and at least start to get some reps. His speed, I think, is really lethal. And if you can combine a wombo combo of Brees Hall and Izzy at some point during the season, it's going to be really fun to watch. Now, maybe they're saying, hey, Let's keep Izzy's legs fresh for as long as we can, and we'll roll with Brees and Carter. Then we have this, you know, back in the stable in the event you gotta gotta roll with him. As far as Dalvin Cook goes in terms of a trade, you're looking at maybe a late round pick swap. Like something we saw for Hardman, where it was Hardman and a seventh for a 2025 sixth round pick. That's the only way that you could really move Dalvin Cook at this point. His contract was pretty much uh I don't want to say guaranteed, but there's not a whole lot of, of cap benefit for the Jets moving on from Dalvin Cook. I think it's about a million dollars. So Dalvin Cook signed a one-year contract with the New York Jets worth $7 million with a $5.8 million guarantee. So if you're doing that math, $1.2 million of the seven is not guaranteed. Cook can earn $1.2 million through per game active roster bonuses. So we've played a third of the season and there was a $1.2 million roster bonus uh, over the course of a season. So if you played one third of the season, there is $800,000 that the Jets can realistically get back if they were to move on from Dalvin Cook, e either via trade or cut. And like I said, the $800,000, I, I don't know. I mean, if they think it's worth it to move him and have the reps go towards Carter and Brees and Izzy, I'm okay with that because I don't really view Cook as an insurance policy anymore for Brees Hall. It just, it seems like he is past his prime or at least not where we should be focusing touches and reps at this point in his career. So $800,000 savings for him. I do think Dalvin Cook, if we can't trade him, is a realistic candidate to get cut because I do think it's worth it for him to just go out and find a, a team that he feels he can have success on, a team that might be willing to give him a little bit more touches. I think the Jets want to do right by him because of the relationship that him and Aaron Rodgers have. Uh, but I'm I'm here for it. I'm I'm ready to move on from Dalvin Cook, even if it is cutting him. It's not saving a whole heck of a lot of cap space. It's more about the touches going to Izzy, going to Carter, going to Brees, than it is about Cook specifically. Uh, and this is a good problem to have, right? Like you have a good running back room that you feel like you can cut a former All Pro and and move off of him, even though you signed him to a contract. And as much as it's frustrating to sign the contract, a, a front office that's willing to move off of someone because they're just not the right guy. That's what I like seeing in Joe Douglas. I'm okay admitting mistakes. Now, you don't want to see a constant barrage of, okay, that's a bad contract. That's a bad contract. That's a bad signing. But that's not really what we're seeing overall. Hardman, I think, was a good swing. Cook, I think, was a good swing. And when you consider all the, you know, the Aaron Rodgers stuff, you consider all the, the injury, you know, related things. 
and they just didn't really work out. So obviously you see Hardman moved this past week. I think Cook, we'd be lucky if we got someone to trade for him. And I like Dalvin Cook. I just don't think you're going to find someone that's going to make the move for a running back that definitely feels like he's beyond his prime at this point in the season. I want to say the expected yards per average uh, or above average for, for Brees Hall is like number two in the NFL. And I think Cook is like number 48. So there's like a wide difference between the two of them. And it helps make your offensive line look a little bit better too when you see uh, running backs getting more yards out of chunk. Not to mention, like when you see Dalvin Cook in, is he really going to go out for a pass? Do you think he's just running it up the gut? Does it give away maybe your offensive philosophy or your offensive uh, predetermined play at the line of scrimmage. I mean, you could use that to your benefit, I guess, if teams are so sure that you're going to run with Dalvin Cook that you're more likely to uh, do it when he's in the backfield. Maybe you run a play action then. But I, uh, I'm okay with ending the Dalvin Cook experiment right where it's at right now.